I want to welcome everyone to the official webinar series of the Center for Sustainability Transitions at Stellenbosch University. We've been running the, these webinars about twice a month now since March 2020, and we usually cover a, a wide variety of topics under sort of broad umbrella themes of resilience and sustainability, complexity th thinking, natural resource governance, um, and transformations more generally. And so welcome to any repeat attendees. We're happy to see you again. And also welcome to anyone joining us for the first time. Um, a warm welcome to everyone. And thank you for joining us for today's webinar on reimagining youth visions of nature futures in the global south. So this webinar is about this project that we've been running at the CST for a number of months now. And um, as we go through the webinar, we'll be introducing different parts of a project and different uh, members of the research team will be introducing those. So you'll, you'll get to uh, know the research team as we go along. Um, my name is uh, Micah Hama and I'm a researcher at the CST. Um, and we, I'll be handing over in a minute to my colleague Nadia. But just before that, I wanted to um, say that we have a bit of a reflection or discussion section at the end of this webinar, sort of the last 20 minutes or so, where we kind of look back on the project and, and think a little bit about the things we've learned and the next steps. Um, but we'd really love uh, for you all to send us your questions or your comments or your reflections in the chat. Um, we'd, we'd love to this for this to be a bit interactive. Um, and so please send us your comments or questions. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the chat and come back to those uh, at the end um, of the webinar, sort of in the last 20 minutes or so. Um, and so without further ado, I want to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Nadia Sitas, who is a senior researcher at the CST and who will be taking us a little bit into why this project, what this project was about, and, um, and then we'll take it from there. So. Welcome again, everyone. Thank you for joining us and over to you, Nadia. Thank you so much, Micah, um, and welcome to everybody. It's such a pleasure to uh, present this project. Uh, it's something that uh, we've been working on for the last six months and maybe a little bit longer, but it's really been such a, a wonderful um, piece of inspirational work and we've connected with so many amazing young people in the region. Um, and it's a project that came about through uh, the support from the support from a number of different organizations. Um, and maybe in describing some of the history, uh, we'll piece together um, how this shaped up over the last couple of months. So as Micah says, I'm Nadia Sitas. I'm based at the CST at Stellenbosch University. Um, and this project was implemented uh, with a number of researchers from CST, but also in collaboration uh, with some partners in Brazil who are also joining us on the call and importantly um, hopefully a lot of the participants that are on the call as well some of the wonderful youth organizations that we partnered with. So just very briefly uh, what we'll be covering in this very short hour is we'll give you a brief outline um, of the history of the project, we'll also present some of the aims and objectives of this project that we've called Youth Nature Futures um, and give you some background of how we engage with youth groups in Southern Africa and Brazil. Uh, also some of the exploration around youth nature futures and how this, we feel that this is a very important space to start thinking and working into, um, especially uh, making sure that their contributions from the global south and how we might envision new ways to creatively communicate some of the science that's been generated at research institutions and part of these big science policy processes that are happening around the world. Um, we'd also like to speak into um, how we might develop new collaborations, build on existing collaborations, um, and really further discussions on how we can include youth voices in science policy processes, in sustainable development, um, and especially thinking about how we can make um, these futures more just um, going forward. So very, very briefly, um, at the Center for Sustainability Transitions, um, we, a lot of our work focuses on looking into the future um, and really trying to create new methodologies and ways um, of, of running um, creative futures processes. And this is building on some work that um, had been done at the CST through uh, collaboration in the Seeds of Good Anthropocene's project, where a number of the CST researchers have been involved in the Inception project, but also in building that um, in many of the exciting um, activities that are linked to that project. And essentially it's looking for um, these seeds or, or pockets of, of, um, pockets of uh, 
desirable futures in the present um, and thinking about how we might um, surface these in more creative and collaborative processes going forward. And this work also builds um, on uh, projects that we've been involved in. So through work with the USAID funded Resilient Waters Project, which works in the Okavango and the Popa River Basin supporting um, transboundary organizations, so river basin organizations um, and transfrontier conservation areas, and really trying to think of ways that we can involve the youth in those activities going forward. And importantly, this work builds on some of the, the work that we've been um, playing a role in the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform for Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, um, where we started, we played quite a big role in the Africa assessment, um, and more specifically in the scenario section of that work. So just a brief background, some of, to give you a history of the project, um, it built on, it came from work that we were doing in the IPES space. Um, and IPES um, is, if for those of you aren't familiar with it, it is like the IPCC-like mechanism, but for biodiversity. Um, and it holds a number of different um, uh, functions, but the mission is to strengthen the knowledge foundations for better policy through science. Uh, for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity, long-term human well-being and sustainable development. And it's been running for um, 10 years now. Um, and it's an independent intergovernmental body with over, um, I think this number may have even uh, increased since we developed these slides, number of different member states and governments that have signed up to be part of this process. And essentially it it's, um, convenes um, and supports a number of different assessments. It provides a whole lot of policy support. It has a big capacity building um, component, which is what I'll touch on a bit more. Uh, there's a strong focus on how we might incorporate other ways of knowing, um, so indigenous and local knowledge in these assessments, um, and then quite a, a big component on how do we manage knowledge and data and communicate the science in different ways. So just to give you a, a brief, yeah, an overview, the global assessment, which was recently launched, took about three years, had a whole lot of different chapters made up of lots of different um, pages and was through this engagement between science and policy. Um, and so one of the, the main mechanisms is that it implements its work is also through a capacity building program. Um, and this is to, su to, to support um, different member states and researchers um, on building the science capacity that can develop the type of um, information that could be useful for decision making. And part of the capacity building process is this fellows program. Um, and at the moment they've got 94 fellows from all over the world. Um, and myself and um, Odie from the CST were part of this fellowship program. Um, and it's, it's really been a phenomenal process of being involved in these assessments, but also being part of this wonderful alumni of, of other researchers, early career researchers. Um, and so with discussions with the technical support unit for the capacity building um, of, of IPES, which is uh, based at the Norwegian Environment Agency and discussions with some of the people there, they, they started asking us, well, do we work with youth groups in Southern Africa? Can we think of ways that we could bring them into these conversations? Um, how might we better communicate some of the science and, um, and the outcomes of these assessments with, with the youth who are the future custodians um, of, of nature? Um, and so we started entering into discussion and building this project, and it really was a collaborative kind of co-design with a lot of different researchers at the CSC of what might we be able to do with some of the youth networks. Um, and importantly, one thing that came out of um, the assessments is um, one thing that was missing is how do we build in different and new imaginations and especially um, youth visions of the future um, for really thinking about what pockets or seeds of hope and change might exist in the present and need to be nurtured or, or kind of composted to make them surface um, uh, yeah, and, and move forward into, into the future. Um, and especially how can we bring these youth visions of the future into these science policy processes. And that's really where this project started. Um, so we started thinking um, about how we could engage with different networks. Um, and um, essentially what happened was over a couple of months, so the project started, um, we started speaking about how this project might work in November, but it really started um, uh, the beginning of this year. Of course, um, with COVID, there were all sorts of complications around how we might engage with these networks. It's, you know, it's so much better being able to do face-to-face -face engagement, but that wasn't possible. Um, so all of this, we had to also think creatively, how can we do these creative processes, but all, all online? Um, and first of all, how could we reach out to the different networks? So over the couple of months, um, we um, sent out a call um, and we also 
developed a website, uh, which will pop the link in the chat um, for, for different organizations to register um, and to, be, to start um, being part of this process. Um, at the same time, we were also engaging um, with uh, another FS fellow, Juliana, who's also on this call um, in Brazil, um, and, and thinking about how we might be able to run these, these parallel processes, both in Brazil and in Southern Africa. So um, we got a whole lot of different uh, youth organizations from eight different countries in Southern Africa registered to be part of these workshops and to be part of these creative processes. An amazing spread of phenomenal groups doing the most inspiring work um, and also um, coming into the conversations with passion and energy. Um, and as you'll see later on in the call, really bringing some amazingly creative practices um, and visions um, for the future. So again, on the website, so you'll be able to find more information about all of these different youth groups because that's also what we wanted to do is, is kind of leverage our privilege of being part of these global conversations um, and elevate youth voices into that space as well. Um, what we also recognized is that a lot of the, in, in order for youth groups to participate in a lot of these um, different, uh, you know, even in projects to, to they, they, there's, they need to use quite a lot of resources um, to, to be able to participate. So what we wanted to do just in thinking about how we might um, allocate resources and funding as well to really support the proposal development process and not just the end kind of creative process as well. So lots of learning on our side on how to better engage with youth networks. So we, um, the whole process ran through three different workshops. Um, and the first workshop, we really wanted to um, introduce FS. Um, some, some participants were familiar with FS. Um, but some weren't. So we wanted to introduce some of the outcomes of these assessments, especially you know, how they land within the Southern African um, context. We wanted to explore the impacts of environmental change in the lives of, of the, the young people joining our call in Southern Africa, and also provide an opportunity for them to connect with each other. Um, so we tried to be as creative as, as possible, um, and Haley will, will speak a little bit more about that later, but also trying to be as interactive, so running Mentimeters and asking questions like, what does nature mean to you? We also um, had moments of little creative processes where we would ask people to doodle and draw, uh, linked to some of the questions we were asking. Um, and essentially, um, yeah, this first workshop uh, was just a, a moment to connect with each other. Um, and to share some of the findings that had been generated through, through the IPES assessments. The second workshop, we wanted to focus more on looking into the future, um, and it was part capacity building around a futuring kind of activity um, using a modified um, Three Horizons approach. Um, and essentially, we wanted to uh, also surface what these different visions of nature futures might be for Southern Africa and explore different ways of getting to these desired futures based on the activities that participants um, were already engaged in. And importantly, at the end of it, we wanted to launch this art competition for Southern African youth groups to creatively express their visions of nature futures. Um, and so the, these are just some of the interactive boards that we had when we were working with the groups um, of thinking about these different nature futures. So questions around what does your nature future look or feel like? How do people relate to each other? What does the environment look like in your, in your nature futures? How do we produce and consume? Um, and questions around who has the power to make changes. Um, again, with uh, a few creative practices where we would ask some questions and people would doodle. Um, and we had a wonderful artist who was working with us to try and pull all of this together as well. So this is um, a, a Three Horizons process, which essentially looks at, it kind of looks at what um, the existing conditions might be, where are, what is the desirable future and how might we get there and focusing a lot on what is already happening. Um, but not to go into the details of what surfaced from these discussions, we've got some of this information coming out in a report that um, we could, uh, we can share with, with whoever's interested. But it really a lot of discussion around how can we change values, how can we elevate the voices of youth, how can we make sure that um, we can we can assist people to be active citizens, um, and yeah, and a whole lot of other comments based on on work that was happening as well. And you can see some of that work shining through in the creative um, outputs that were shared later on. So the last workshop that we had um, was bringing together, once we had launched the, the creative arts process, um, was bringing together all of the, the people that were awarded grants um, to present their projects and to share with each other. Um, not everyone that participated in the earlier workshops went on to propose um, creative, 
creative projects, but this was just a space to, to again connect with each other and to showcase some of the work. Um, we are extremely grateful to all of the groups that put in a huge amount of effort in a very short space of time in extremely trying conditions. I mean, how do you run participatory creative processes um, in the time of COVID? Um, and so it was, yeah, we were really um, blown away by all of the submissions that came. So I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen now and we'll share a video with you with just summarize it's a tiny little snapshot um, of some of the different um, projects that people uh, worked on and it's anything from kind of dance to to drama to murals to painting to um, upcycling to rap songs um, yeah so let me stop sharing and I'll hand over now to Haley who can who can run that video for us I'm working on a piece together with the Zimbabwe Youth Biodiversity Network and Artsy Trust. And the piece is supposed to depict my or the youth's vision for the future. My inspiration came from that deep connection spiritually, physically and emotionally. And that in itself, it provides some form of comfort and solace. It's kind of like putting you in a space of this is how we would want to be. In this storyline, this is a landscape of your typical Harare savanna. I'm trying to cover up the grass and then I'll, well, I'm trying to work on the ladies. They're going to pray for the rains. I've always known that educating people about climate change cannot be done only through presentations or articles, but it also can be done through artivism. Not everyone likes to read nor listen to people deliver speeches. With the help of Youth Nature Futures conducting this arts competition, we were then able to come up with a dance piece um, that we think would be interesting to the viewers and would make them want to engage in climate change, coming with solutions to the climate crisis and getting more youth involved in climate justice. Artwork was about capturing traditional knowledge in a certain by conserving it through food and uh, using the digital media to showcase this and spread awareness. This was such an impactful and insightful project for us. We have we created a Facebook page, Good Lava Maswati. We also created a blog which will be continuing with for probably the rest of the year because there's so much information to share. We also did radio interviews. We had a publication in the national article. And we were also able to present our project to the Minister of Tourism and Environmental Affairs. I would be a fantasy. Such a cellular cool, you didn't do it missing an hour. You missing an hour in our last month practice at home. I must give it. Temos que respeitá-la, é dever de cada filho cuidar da sua mãe e amá-la. Ela alberga todos nós na sua grande casa e nos alimenta com ar puro humano. E tudo é de graça e dá graça, já tem convênio pelo verde que te circunda. Esta é a geração C. We brought them to the, to the group to show them how to recycle, how to reuse, instead of throwing this material uh, to the nature, to the sea, and we have, we have done uh, something this is a project for the uh, schools of Mussurit. Mussurit, uh, that's a district in the Nampula province, the north of Mozambique. We are 
teaching the, the students of secondary school to grow for the environment thing. Here in Mozambique, we have that environment club in the secondary school. So we use environment club to empower the young women him and the, some leadership students. My natureza. The project is a mural which is painted onto a law enforcement block on the Fisher Beach, which is in the southern peninsula of Cape Town. Being creative about solutions should happen with a mix of everybody, and especially you. We speak together, we work together, we create one voice and it has more power. So if we each put our little voices together, we make a really big voice together. They are taking part, especially for advocacy through art, especially drawing and even uh, poetry. Through this project, we have seen that there are people, they can be able to protect the environment. As a youth, we are supposed to participate in making the environment to be uh, sustainable. This nature reserve was neglected for years, but we as the youth from Ida's Valley decided to take ownership and to use this as an opportunity to empower our people and give them a chance to become breadwinners, to become trail rangers, and also to become tour guides, to tell the story of Ida's Valley community not only to our people, but to tourists. The nature reserve can be used in so many ways. It can be used for jogging purposes, mountain biking purposes, and hiking purposes. But the main story behind this is to use this as a platform to redirect tourism through previous disadvantaged areas. Not only will we be able to tell the story of Ida's Valley community, but we will give effect to the minds of our youth, the children, and also create the opportunity to create leaders amongst youth. With the help of Youth Nature Futures, we did a song. We have the power. It's a call to action song. Music inspires, we believe that engaging in young people's voices and ideas helps to ensure continued efforts around environmental conservation. The South African Youth Biodiversity Network Art Project is titled Turning Trash into Treasure. So the idea behind it is to use recyclable items that can be found in ordinary households and within our communities and turning them into creative artwork realized that there's a lot of recyclable material in our area and young people in our area have shown interest in the artwork project so we will be continuing with our artwork project we managed to get four poems 12 stories and uh, 21 videos the world is changing from this soil our main aspect is to have food on our table let's fight for environmental justice why should you cut down trees? Being a single mother, I have faced many challenges. Because these young people are coming from different backgrounds. They have never worked together before. But at the end of the project, of this project, they were very much united. Hopefully um, you could all hear that okay, and hopefully you're as amazed and inspired by the incredible diversity of creative outputs that uh, these groups put together uh, to depict their visions of a sustainable future, youth future. Um, so yeah, thank you again so much to the groups for their incredible artworks. And of course, that's just a, um, 
that's just a snapshot for each of the groups. So we really encourage you to go onto the website, the link that we shared, um, where there's a lot more information and longer clips uh, for some of the videos for each of the uh, for, for each of the groups. Um, so as Nadia said, in addition to uh, these creative outputs from the groups themselves, of course, there were a lot of uh, really important and interesting messages, feelings, um, perceptions that came from the discussions with these youth groups uh, during the workshops. And so we also um, asked uh, two people, two artists, to do some creative harvesting during that process as well. So just to share that with you briefly. Um, uh, so the first uh, was graphic, graphic harvesting that was done by Claire at Creative Care. Um, Nadia's already showed you some of the, the doodles that she captured uh, from, from the people attending those uh, discussions. And here are a couple more examples where People captured what they believed to be the problem, the solution, and their dreams, and those were beautifully captured uh, by, by Claire as well. And then she also produced these really beautiful uh, images of youth, youth nature futures. And then in addition to the graphic harvesting, we uh, also asked a poet to uh, express her sentiments uh, after those discussions uh, through, through a beautiful poem. That she that she wrote. So, um, poetess Popo is on the call with us. I'm hoping that um, her internet is is good enough for her to to perform her poem for us today. Um, so, over to you, poetess Popo. You're on mute. Good afternoon, CST and the world. Am I audible enough? Um, this is a poem that I wrote, and this poem is titled um, Motherland. So today I'm just going to perform the poem without music so that the previous um, audience that I had that listened to it with music can listen to it now in a further engagement without the music. So I hope you enjoy the poem. Motherland. Our geography is made up of brown cities and distant green villages. Nearby is a city we all desire. Her golden skylines reflecting in crimson hues and canvassed to heal her land and deliver promises to her unborn generations. An Africa driven by bloodlines of juvenile delicate spirits, wind willed by the desire for documented human stories. We have longed for her before, sang in hymns and marched for her golden horizons. We are called to follow the smoke of her greenhouse gases emission far in the cityscape, the encoupling of blooming flowers and indigenous shrubs on the sidewalks of her villages and navigation for silent dreamers. Green waters on each side of the rustic tall bridges, a beautiful chaos, making the future a dancing harb of unique harmonies. The geography of waste piled on carb stones swaying in cold breeze, a reminder for passerbys to always carry their litter back home. We are called, we are purposed to build a legacy we have long desired brick by brick to fit our dreams into a world that knows us name for name yet forgets to invite us into tables of conversation. We are puzzle pieces in an earth that heals herself like the medicine woman with a burning torch on one hand and water on the other. We are a series of ideas headed for change in the space that yearns for our creativity. Our inviting green and blue geographies extended over political borders. We are bold, strong in our bloodlines. We hold atlases of our homes in the palms of our hands, 
with the desire to one day invite global leaders to travel in thought of us and in remembrance of home, home, motherland. Motherland is harmony. Motherland is a pollution-free city calling explorers, researchers, and guests and her children back into her embrace. Welcome home to Motherland. <sighs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, poetess Popo. It's spectacular every time uh, we get to listen to you perform in such a beautiful poem. So thank you so much. Uh, Poetess Popo is also a, a PhD student at the CST uh, as part of the Resilient Waters program that Nadia mentioned earlier. Um, so now we're going to hand over to our Brazilian colleagues uh, to, to share some of um, what emerged from the process in Brazil. Um, so Juliana has shared a vis video with us, which we will um, share with you. Juliana, can I ask you to just introduce yourself before we, um, we share your video? Hello, good, good morning. Good morning for me. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, I'm Juliana from Brazil. I'm in, in Sao Paulo state. And I'm also a, a fellow, a, an IPBES fellow. And well, uh, we, we did a, a short video with synthesizing some of the, for you to, to, to get some flavor. And I also hope that you can visit the, the website and watch the, the, the whole videos. And well, let, let, let's uh, watch the video and then I can answer your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Juliana. Okay, I'm going to share now. Fruto de uma parceria entre a Acarui e a Plataforma Brasileira de Biodiversidade e Serviços Ecossistêmicos e viabilizado por diversos apoiadores, o projeto Repensa abriu espaço para jovens de todo o Brasil mostrarem suas visões de futuros desejáveis para a humanidade e o planeta Terra, por meio de expressões artísticas. Quase 500 pessoas de todas as regiões do Brasil se inscreveram individualmente e 70 coletivos enviaram seus trabalhos em formato de vídeos com diversos tipos de expressões artísticas, como dança, performance, desenho, história em quadrinho, poesia, música, teatro de bonecos, animação, grafite. Também promovemos bate-papos com convidados inspiradores. Tudo isso com especial atenção à acessibilidade para pessoas surdas, por meio de legendas e tradução em libras. Foi uma jornada intensa de pouco mais de um mês, em que mobilizamos uma quantidade surpreendente de pessoas em nossas redes sociais, com 626 seguidores no Instagram, 931 inscritos no canal do YouTube e mais de 5 mil visualizações dos vídeos. Dos 10 trabalhos finalistas, 5 foram escolhidos por diferentes júris para ganhar prêmios de 5 mil reais. Quero deixar também me registrado a, a minha alegria de tantos grupos estarem participando e também plantando a semente deles, né, do bem, para a gente buscar um mundo melhor, que não depende só de uma pessoa, né, depende de todos. Qual que é o nosso projeto de futuro, velho? Nós queremos a horta comunitária na perifa, verde, sim, queremos limpos, rios e mares e mais árvores no caminho. Então a gente começa a construir isso a partir dessa poesia. Porque a gente a está gente muito nesse cenário apocalíptico, enfim, de, de muita desesperança. 
e, e é uma, essas coisas são coisas que, que ajudam a gente a continuar acreditando no, no que a gente faz, no nosso trabalho, é, porque tudo que a gente quer é ser, ser reconhecido, é ter nossa voz projetada e, e saber que a nossa mensagem está chegando nos lugares é muito importante para a gente. Então, por isso, eu gostaria de agradecer a vocês. Então, é uma desconexão que a gente tem. O capitalismo ele desconecta a gente da Terra. E aí, a nossa proposta é mostrar que é possível se reconectar e ressignificar a relação que a gente tem com tudo que a gente produz. A gente pensa num futuro em que a gente tire o ser humano do topo e essa visão egocêntrica que a gente tem. E temos soluções baseadas na natureza. E os outros cinco grupos finalistas foram premiados com mil reais. É, eu tenho um grande sonho, eu meio que vivo assim, projetando esse sonho de um futuro é, de agrofloresta com consciência de classe, com consciência de raça, com uma série ali de reestruturações, reconfigurações culturais. Então, eu acho que é um trabalho que vem falando sobre um futuro que já está aí, sabe? Para quem quiser vivê-lo. É um futuro que, que já é possível. Para nós deu super certo. A gente gostou muito do resultado. E, e foi estreia no, no projeto, porque assim ninguém nunca tinha visto nem nada. E nós lançamos aí o nosso vídeo como estreia para vocês. Enfim, eu queria deixar uma frase que, eu, que é da música, que é a história escrita por vencedores não tem poder para calar nossos tambores. É, não existe de um lado o civilizado que pode explorar o selvagem. Nós somos a natureza, a natureza somos nós, assim, né? E o que essa intensa jornada do Repensa ensinou para a equipe organizadora? Antes de participar do projeto, eu me considerava uma pessoa pessimista, assim, até com a conjuntura que a gente tem vivido. Porém, depois que eu comecei a fazer parte da equipe do projeto, eu comecei a ter esperança de que... uma esperança de que ainda dá tempo, né? Acho que meu maior aprendizado com Repensa foi entender que eu não preciso, a gente não precisa cumprir esse destino de acabar com o nosso planeta antes de construir o que a gente quer. A gente não precisa continuar seguindo essas mesmas regras. A gente pode criar as nossas e a gente pode pensar de uma forma diferente. Se a gente soubesse a potência que a gente tem, ficaria muito óbvio que podemos, sim, transformar o mundo. É, nós precisamos ter um repertório de imaginários sobre o que a gente quer ver no mundo para quando as crises acontecem, e elas vão acontecer, a gente tem as bases para reconstruir em trajetórias desejáveis. E o Repensa está justamente ajudando a construir essas bases. Engajar jovens para formar coletivos, colocar todo mundo discutindo essa, essa, essa lógica de construir um futuro, acho que é o que me deixou mais impressionada com o processo todo do Repensa. Assim. Então, para mim foi um processo enorme de aprendizado, né? tá tatuado em mim essa essa vontade de, de usar a arte como uma forma de comunicação e, quem sabe, traduzir o conhecimento que a gente gera dentro da universidade em uma forma é, mais acessível para as pessoas e tornando essa informação mais palatável, fazendo o que, de fato, a gente precisa fazer, que é mobilizar, engajar, em especial as juventudes.
absolutely incredible to see the amazing art artworks that came from um, Brazil as well. And um, also a huge thank you to Juliana and her team who reflected at the end there for the incredible um, project that they managed to pull off in quite a short amount of time and with such that generated such interest. I mean, I think you said 5,000 votes um, on the videos. It's just amazing. So lovely to see. And again, as Juliana says, and we can share in the chat um, to share the link to the YouTube channel and the website as well. So you can also watch um, those videos in full. Um, so I, I'll hand over now to Odie and Micah to, to lead a discussion. Thank you so much, Hayley. Um, and again, thank you to Juliana also for making yourself available um, at morning time for you in Brazil and uh, to make yourself available if anyone has any questions. So please, everyone, if you do have questions, like, just a, a reminder again, or if you have any comments to please put them in the chat. I see that there's been a lot of reaction to the the amazing artwork we've seen already in the chat. So um, please feel free to, to continue doing that. And to kick us off in the discussion, I think we just wanna use the remaining quarter of an hour that we have to kind of reflect a little bit on this process. Um, and I, I, we've invited Nina Callahan, who's also a researcher at the CST to start, off, start us off in this discussion with a few reflections of her own, because um, Nina has been a wonderful help to us from the start in the, in the project. She was always there with wonderful advice um, because Nina has a lot of experience working with, with the youth and the children because she's the South African chair of the Children's Radio Foundation. And so um, her input and advice at the, at the start of this project was invaluable. And so we thought we'd circle back to her um, sort of at the end now and maybe get some of her initial reflections to, to start off the conversation. So over to you, Nina, and thank you for joining us. Sure, thanks, Micah, and thanks everybody. Whew, I'm so inspired and so buoyed and lifted um, by the work you all have managed to achieve in a really short space of time. It's really incredible. And um, Namezo, I'm going to come back to your invitation to think of youth as medicine. That is so powerful. It's a, it's a really powerful invocation because what we can appreciate is a wholeness and a health and a vitality and a diversity that is embodied, that is active, um, and that's real in the world. Um, and like our Brazilian peer said, you know, to bring closer a future that is already possible. Um, so all of the efforts, all of the convening um, and, and the products that everyone has made just really speaks to this idea of, of youth as medicine. Um, on my other reflections to think about um, youth in relation to sustainability, we often think of youth as disruptors, as instigators, um, a constituent of our society who are prepared to take more risks or different risks, um, who are able to break the rules and reconstitute values for our time. Um, and I think this is really true and very necessary but it's also such a burden for young people to be, um, to be the custodians of the future, to make it manifest in ways that adults and previous generations have failed to do. So um, I really take note of this burden. I really think that as adults, as institutions, we need to recognize and support these efforts um, to build youth capacity, to amplify what's already there um, and, to, and to share our skills and our access to help them refine ideas and to articulate them um, like you all have done so beautifully in this project. Um, I think we do need to use our privilege of access to all kinds, access to information, access to resources and I think this is where um, the Nature Futures project has been has been really successful to be able to mobilize that. Um, I also know that um, being a convener of a project like this there's some anxiety as to how you tell the funders and tick off the log frame boxes of 
the outputs and uh, the outcomes um, and in a way that donors understand and relate to. Um, so I think it's a very courageous undertaking also as researchers and conveners to challenge those traditional kinds of outputs and outcomes and to really appreciate the value of the work as it lands in communities and as it lands in real time in young people's lives. So just a real big salute to you. Uh, I'm very aware of all the ethical and other considerations um, that was very front and center for you all as responsible researchers, as you under, you know, really grabbed hold of your roles. So yeah, all my, all my admiration and, uh, and thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nina. Um, I mean, it's, it's always really, I think it, it's really captured in all the, um, the reflections we've also seen that the visions of the future are always um, very bleak, apocalyptic, and it, it's hard to imagine what things would look like after the storm in a way. And I think providing these options and these visions uh, paints a picture of what, what could be. Uh, and I think in, in something that caught me in Juliana's reflection that the, 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 the the, the bad things will come, so to speak. And it's, it's a matter of imagining how else things could be different. Uh, and, 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 and I think this is the beginning, I, I think uh, from what we learned, at least in this process, is that this is just the beginning of more, more engagement with, with the youth and, 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 and thinking more about how to design this process. And we need to see more of this around. Um, seeing that, I, I don't see a lot of questions in the, in the chat. Maybe I'll ask uh, some of our CST colleagues to reflect a bit as well about the process uh, in terms of our own learning and yeah, feel free to share whatever, whatever you'd like to. Thanks. Um, I may take that offer Odi, and jump in and it's, it's a, in a response to Nina, um, one of your uh, reflections on the role of funders in this space and I think we were extremely lucky um, to have the Norwegian Environment Agency as our initial funders, um, who, who I think they'd already been trust built up because you know us, the, the, the three of us that were fellows in, in the IFBES Fellowship Program had already worked with them. Um, there was some trust there um, and they essentially just handed the process over to us. They said, do what makes sense, do what you know to be true and useful and even having slightly separate processes unfolding in, in South Africa and Brazil. Um, they were wonderfully accommodating um, with, with all of the things that we threw at them. In the beginning, they said, can't you just hold a small discussion in South Africa, just with a couple of youth people, and that will be it. And we were like, well, we have a different plan. How does this sound? Um, and, and they were, yeah, amazingly um, responsive. Um, unfortunately, uh, they can join us on the call. It would have been lovely to hear their reflections as well, but we've had some reflections in writing. Um, and definitely the intention is to, how do we elevate um, some of these voices and take them into conversations that are happening at a global scale? So lots of discussions around biodiversity, climate change, the importance of bringing youth voices into those spaces. Um, and hopefully we can carry um, some of these creative outputs into those spaces, because I think it's really hard to, to imagine a different future without, um, you know, creativity and thinking with, you know, your head, your heart and your hands and bringing all of those into, into the work that, um, that we do. So, so that was just a yeah, reflection on, on, on the initial funders, which made it um, extremely easy to to try something that was a little bit beyond our comfort zone. Um, but thanks again, Nina, for some of your guidance there. Um, and then it's maybe, I'm not sure if there are any funders on this call, but it's, you know, how can we grow this work? How can we weave it into all of the projects that we're doing? How can we make sure that we are being inclusive, um, especially if we're working around policy design? Is that policy fit for future generations? And does it speak to the dreams and visions that they have? Um, so a call to kind of, yeah, um, at least for, for those of us that were involved in this project to definitely build on it. And we're really, you know, submitting a couple of other proposals to, to take this work forward because, you know, they, we've only started these conversations um, and we'd love to continue some more reflections with the Brazilian team. You know, it was phenomenal that came out of those spaces. So many similarities that are facing um, 
youth in both of those spaces. Um, so I'll I'll end it there and let and let somebody else reflect as well. There is actually a question in the in the Q and A from uh, from Fionn asking what uh, how we plan to take this continue to work with the groups. Um, I, I guess my my one quick thought there would be that we we have been having conversations about one uh, and, and as Nadia has already mentioned to uh, putting putting together some future from some proposals for future funding, but also thinking about how to connect the groups themselves. Uh, I think there's there's been a lot of really interesting interest uh, from both the groups in in the in the in the region as well as uh, with the groups in in Brazil. There's some interesting uh, potential collaborations that can happen there as well. So it's something we're really really keen to explore. And I think as we as we look forward for for different funding opportunities, um, hopefully future collaboration or more collaborations with the, with our current funder as well, uh, would we'll be really looking to explore how to strengthen this network that is now in existence. Thanks. Anybody else, Micah? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think we, we're open also to, um, if someone wants to say something, we can make you, um, I don't know how it, exactly it works, but we, <laughs> we can make it so that you can actually speak. So if you if you do have a point to make, you can just pop your name into the, the chat and we'll make it so that you can actually say something. While we're waiting for people to put their hand up, um, just uh, I think, you know, one of the you know, futures and futures literacy and scenarios, um, it's, it's a tool that we use in a lot of our work. And so that's definitely um, something that we'll be trying to build on um, a lot more in, in the, the years to come. But, but especially how do we, so this was, you know, creating creative outputs, but how can we embed creativity and imaginations into other processes? So the output doesn't necessarily have to be a creative piece of work, but it's how do we um, mobilize and catalyze um, other parts of our brain and other parts of our being to help envision different futures or, or help envision how we might connect with other visions that are slightly misaligned to our own. Um, and that's definitely a space that we'd love to experiment more in. Um, and especially how do we take a lot of the, the science that we're working on? So, you know, most of us on this call and the panel um, are researchers. We work at research institutions. We, you know, maybe postgraduate students. How do we take that work um, and, and enable it to speak to a, a diverse set of audiences beyond journal publications, beyond being involved in these big science assessments, which are critical? But, but how do we communicate that language in more accessible um, and creative ways? So that's also stuff that we're definitely thinking of. Nina, I see your hand is up. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, um, what's of great value um, to this project um, is, is, and especially working on a product. So working on a product, you, you have to bring all kinds of skills together organizing, um, figuring out your ideas, agreeing, um, you know, once you have consensus, trying to understand how you are going to use your resources and so forth. And so for young people, creating a product brings together so much of learning around other kinds of skills and other kinds of learning, which is very important to build muscle to know how to act in the world. So even through a product, you are activating a sense of agency and you are becoming skilled in, in, in being an actor and not just a critic. You know, there's a, there's a wonderful space where you, where you, where you cross over that, uh, that line um, from, from just talking to doing something. Um, and it's a great lesson as well for, for, for researchers who often talk a lot and we, don't, and we don't do anything or we're too afraid to do anything or we're not quite sure how to do it. And I think that processes like this um, provide some pathway and some freedom to, to exhale and to act. Um, so I think that they are, they are critically important.
I see uh, Juliana also want to say something. Please go ahead, Juliana. Juliana. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I I was thinking that the, along the process, it the, became very clear to me how we lost, we all lost our capacity to envision what we really want because we are uh, so used to see and talk about what we don't want. And when we opened the call, it was, uh, it, it got very clear that the, the difficulty that people uh, find, found to express what they want. We received, most uh, artworks we received were talking about dystopic futures. And we, we asked only one thing from the, the, the groups, give me a desirable view of what uh, future you want. And, but uh, somehow they, they still have this need to speak about and, and to be heard, uh, speaking about what's wrong and what they don't want. Because I, I, I think that that's the first step to be capable of uh, envisioning positive futures. So um, uh, I, it, it makes me wonder that these uh, young people really need to be heard and listened to you know, uh, uh, in order to be able to imagine uh, future th things. So, uh, and also another thing I was wondering is, how can we use this IPES network to, to really elevate these voices of the, these young people? Because there is a, we are part of a, a network that uh, already exists and that's, uh, which is involved in uh, what we have done. And so can, can we, how can we best use this, this uh, network besides just um, uh, just telling people in our WhatsApp uh, group that that uh, you know uh, about the 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 website and stuff. So, food for thought. Thank you so much, Juliana. I'm also afraid that we do have a bit of a hard stop at two with these webinars. Usually they, they are just an hour. I feel like we could obviously continue these conversations for a while. There was also another interesting question in the chat by Dylan, um, uh, Dylan Smith, actually one of uh, the people who also collaborated with us in the art project about, you know, what, what is, is there, can one identify like a single thing that funders look for that they, that they, you know, across the board that, that they really like to, uh, to see in, in projects and proposals. And I, I think that's a good question. I'm not sure because my in, immediate response would be like, well, it depends a little bit, you know, because usually funders tell you what they really care for. But I think that's, it's still a good question to think about, like, what is the one thing um, maybe that we can identify that is, is, is quite an important part of actually for these youth groups to be successful in, in getting uh, future funding. And so I think, yeah, let's, we can't maybe answer that now because we are out of time, but let's table that and come back to that. And I, again, this is hopefully just the start of many more conversations um, and many more engagements. And we're just really grateful to everyone to have joined us today for this hour to get a bit of a glimpse, see just a quick overview of all the wonderful things that were done and to inspire us to do more together. And really also a big thank you to all the youth groups um, that are in attendance today. And again, that gave so much of their time and energy to this project. And we do hope that we can continue these collaborations. Please always feel free to contact us um, through the website. We have a, an email address also, um, which we'll just pop in the chat as well quickly. Um, and uh, or, or any of our personal sort of institutional email addresses at the CST, you're very welcome anytime to, to contact any of us. Um, and so I think with that, let's quickly wrap, wrap up. And uh, again, a big thank you to everyone for attending. And we'll hope to see you again soon when we talk more about youth nature features. So bye everybody.